Hi, I'm Harry Forbes from ARC Advisory Group. I'm here today with Paul Sirico, who's Director of Marketing and Product for the Fieldcom Group. Paul, Correct. welcome. Thank you. Thanks it's, for having me. It's nice to have you here, uh, and it's nice to see you. Well, I come every year, so I'm, it's, again, I see you, so it's yeah, great. We do, <laughs> about every year. Yeah. So for folks who aren't familiar, Paul, just give us a thumbnail of what yeah. Fieldcom Group is. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem whatsoever. So Fieldcom Group, we're a member organization. We're a nonprofit member organization. So we don't sell any products to end users. Our members are all companies in the process automation space. They make instruments, they make systems, they make handhelds, they make those types of products. And what we do is we create with those member companies the standards that are used to drive process automation systems and then we do testing and registration of those products as well so that you get the little field com group certified or heart certified or whatever we own a lot of technologies mm -hmm. um, so most people yeah yeah most people are familiar with heart yes. um, which has been around forever but you know it has other iterations there's heart there's 4 to 20 milliamp heart obviously there's heart ip mm -hmm. and there's wireless heart we own the foundation field bus specifications. Um, we own the uh, FDI technology specification, field device integration specification. We'll talk a lot about that today, hopefully. Um, and within, within FDI, there are other technologies that also fall into play, like PADIM, which is an OPC UA focused process automation device information model that we own with about eight other companies. So, okay. So you got a lot of tech. We got a lot of stuff, yeah. But what is. <laughs> Let's drill into FDI. Sure. What FDI is new? The newest one you have. Yeah. So yeah. F F tell me briefly yeah. what it is. In 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 very simple As terms. As if I was a child. In very in very simple terms, FDI stands for Field Device Integration Technology, mm -hmm. and that's a you know a lot of a lot of words to say. We want to make it very easy to integrate a field instrument with a host system, whether that's an asset management system or a control system or whatever. And this is essentially a software technology. FDI is a software technology mm -hmm. that is deployed in both the instrument and on the system to make sure that the two can work seamlessly together as efficiently as possible. Okay. Is that clear? Does it <laughs> well, it sounds great, but tell me a little more about how it works. Okay. Okay. So, so you know, how it works is, first of all, it's an operating system independent technology. So there's no requirements for any particular versions of Windows or anything like mm -hmm. that. And what happens is a, a device, kind of a digital representation of a device called, which is encapsulated in something called an FDI device package, okay. is imported into a host system. And that host system maintains a library of all of the devices that it has to deal with and then it can do operations on those devices and control and configure and maintain them. Okay. okay. So there's some key information store or whatever for a device yes. called this package. Yes. And yes. This, this must be critical to the device that has all the parameterization and all the other exactly. kinds of stuff. Exactly. You know. All right. And, and, and you know, to a, a real simple analogy, keeping with these, with these analogies, it's like you, you know, if you can, you think about a printer driver or a printer package that you might get with an mm -hmm. HP printer that you buy. Sure, there's one file that is the driver that makes the printer work with your computer, but you'll also get uh, you know, many, many other files from HP if it happens to be an HP printer that do other things. Maybe there's user interfaces. Maybe there's configuration panels. Maybe there's other mm -hmm. things. Same, same thing. Only in this case. We're dealing with a field instrument like a pressure temperature level, you know. Okay, so flow it can meter. be it can be both a parameterization, bunch of other information and yep. services for the device. Yep. yep. And what what do you guys do? What does a fieldcom group do with this with this package? Or, or okay. Besides, well, I guess you start with testing. Yeah. Well, first of all, yeah. So first of all, we create the standards. Right. Okay that define what can go into a package, what cannot go into a package, and what the features and functionalities of the, of the various files within that package can and should have. Okay, that's the first thing we do. Second thing we do is on the host side, 
we kind of do the same thing. We, our host systems also have to conform to the FDI standards and we define what those are. Mm -hmm. And then we offer a set of test and registration services for both devices and hosts mm -hmm. so that they can come into our lab, get tested and get validated um, to make sure that they work and comply with the standard. Okay, so you've got hosts, you've, you've, got, um, you've got these um, packages. Yep. FDI packages. Yep, yep, yep. So I've got a device, I've got an FDI package. Where does that, where does that thing live uh, during, the, during the life of this device? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. It's a great, it's a great question. So um, there's a couple of means of distribution, let's say. So when, a, uh, when an end user buys a host system, say AMS device manager or ABB FIM or something, it will probably come with a library of device packages and device drivers from, from prior technology versions that, w that, are, that will operate with that host, mm -hmm. okay? Alternatively, we maintain in the cloud a repository of devices, of device packages and device drivers that um, the host system can access and can continuously update or an end user can go onto our website, for example, find a specific device file and just download it. Okay. Okay. So you guys, the Fieldcom group is the key, well, you're kind of the repository of, of last resort. If I have a device and I yeah. don't, yeah. I, I lost the package or whatever it is. That's a great example. Yeah. Because, you know, some of the most visited pages on our website are the pages that are associated with specific instruments where people come because they need to get that driver or that FDI device package in the middle of the night because there's some problem in the plant. Right. Okay. Um, but by and large, you're going to get the file with your host system um, and it can be updated automatically by the host or through the cloud, through our repository, or it's going to come when you buy, uh, when you buy your instruments. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Let me ask you another question. How do I know, uh -huh. first of all, how do I know, how, can, I, can I identify that package easily? How, how do I do it from your site? Mm -hmm. And then how do I know it's... it's how do I know you haven't been hacked by some terrible? Oh, state? it's the right one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's a pretty that's actually a pretty simple question. So the um, so first of all, to find it on our site, it's pretty easy. We maintain a registry of products, and you go in and you click in Emerson pressure transmitter, and up will pop you know fifty different pre pressure transmitters, and then you pick the one that you have, and you know what version you have, and you down download the file. If it's an FDI device package, you can be sure that it wasn't hacked because one of the benefits of FDI is that the package itself um, is it has a security certificate, and that security certificate is signed by Fieldcom Group. It's signed by the member, and then when it's integrated into the host, there's some signature there too as well. Okay. And this is one of the big benefits. There's many benefits of FDI technology, but one of them is the security features that we've put into it that heretofore really were not available for device driver files right, in and of themselves. Right. Okay. okay. Got it. Yeah. So, um, now, is this, when is this rolling out in terms of, you, you said uh, the host systems. It's a great question. The host systems can be, they could be a, a, a device management software offering right. of, a, of a vendor. Right. They could probably be a DCS of a vendor, is yep. that right? Yeah, the DCS software, yeah, sure. What else? Um, those are the two main categories. There's also a number of handhelds that are supporting FDI. Okay, okay. So, so configurators, could mobile be, configurators, like things a, like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's some kind of software on a handheld exactly. or a laptop. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So into, you asked the question, though, about when is this rolling out? Okay. Well, yeah. What are people doing with it? You okay. Know, can we get it now? Yeah, oh, yeah. You can, you can get it now. In fact, most of the um, major asset management systems and control system software from the major manufacturers like ABB, Siemens, Emerson, Honeywell, um, they all support FDI technology today. Uh, the most recent um, addition is Pactware, which is a kind of a configuration tool that's used by maintenance techs in the field. Pactware 6.1 now supports FDI as well. Okay. There's also, you know, probably about 150 or so odd FDI device packages available for instrumentation at this point in time. Okay, that you have tested? That we have tested and that are registered, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So. Gee, tell, I, you mentioned Packware. That's an interesting thing I'm familiar with. Yeah, okay. It's a, it's a 
a shared source. I'm not sure I want to talk about things you're familiar with. No, <laughs> it could, okay. could get me in trouble. Well, yeah. I, 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 no. Go, I, go ahead. I know about it from before, but mm-hmm. I thought it was associated just with FDT. So the one of the unique things about the FDI standard is with an add-on called an IDTM, okay, mm-hmm. you can consume FDI device packages. And Pactware has built the DTM into you know, in, in, into their in, okay. into their latest release, and therefore you can consume and configure FDI device packages. Great question, by the way. Well, it's one of those things. Packware is one of those things that kind of you find everywhere. You didn't know what yeah. it was. And yeah. You, you see it, and a lot of vendors have it. Yeah, and I'm really excited about it because it, it gives end users the ability to play around with FDI device packages in a very simple way free you know and they didn't they didn't have to you know they didn't have to didn't have that ability necessarily before they had to have an asset management system that supported it okay so well um okay so there's certainly some benefits to this technology we talked about yep you guys having a repository of yeah. these these yep. packages vendors building them into their yeah. offerings already yeah um and them being signed yes so what else? What else is the benefit? This yeah, the yeah. There's there's quite a few, but I, I think the first thing to probably do is take the conversation up a couple levels, because you know, as we as you know, as you write about, as many of the analysts here at ARC write about, you know, the name of the game is kind of what is the you know the next generation for process automation. Right. How is digital? How is digitalization going to occur? Mm-hmm. And um, what steps must end users take to kind of get on that bandwagon? And the, you know, the, the message that, you know, that I like to give is that FDI, the FDI technology platform, which as I mentioned is now already available and for most host systems, is that platform that is kind of the, the get started point for enabling digitalization and enabling um, you know, enabling this next generation of process automation systems. So, so you know, with in addition to the security, you get um, advanced user interfaces. So we now support HTML5 user interface files, which are much more easy to use than a traditional traditional device driver, device descriptor based um, based file. Um, we support features like offline configuration, which is a great tool for the EPCs. You know, now they can configure a thousand devices without having a thousand devices in front of them (laughs) and download that configuration file in a standardized way. You could always do this before proprietarily, but now you can do it in a standardized way through through um, through FDI. And then, you know, for the um, for some of the folks that are that are really interested in uh, more open architecture and uh, more technologies, any 107 is a technology that Mm -hmm. describes advanced device health diagnostics. So every FDI device package must support the NE107 standard that lets mm-hmm. you know whether your device is operating, needs maintenance, is broken, or you know, or is having a problem. So there's a lot of features that come with the DD, the device descriptor, the driver file, if you will, that is incorporated into the FDI device package that you wouldn't have with prior generations of device descriptors. But just to be clear, you don't need to have any kind of new network it, it works with devices that have heart yeah. or yeah, oh yeah or well in foundation you know, field bus or profi bus or whatever well, yeah and we're you know field you know the fdi specification is a co-owned standard okay mm-hmm. pi um, profi bus and field com group manage the development of the standard but it's also owned by the opc foundation um, and we have relationships with, uh, you know, with other standards organizations as well. So, so yeah, so we support HART, we support Foundation Field Bus, we support Profinet. There's connect- connectors for Modbus, there's connectors for ISA 100 Wireless. There's a lot of other technologies other than just Fieldcom Group technologies that work with FDI. Okay. And how broad is the scope of devices that you see or envision being supported by FDI? I mean, well, basically any device, you know. So I mean, so this could be this could be valves and positioners. Oh yeah, valves, positioners, Coriolis flow meters, um, mass flow meters, um, and obviously all the typical, you know, the P's, the T's, the L's, and I mean, you know, that sort of thing. So, okay. um, and then you know, I don't want to talk too much about futures here, but we're also working on 
enhancements to the specification that will enable device packages for you know, Ethernet APL switches, for example, or obviously Ethernet APL devices, mm -hmm. and uh, things like, um, like multiplexers and gateways and, and, and other infrastructure products. Okay. And so, yeah. But that, that is an interesting point because yeah. whatever your forecast is, uh, I certainly think that the development of Ethernet APL and when the devices start to hit the market, I think people are very interested in them. Not just interested, but I, I know certain end users have been pressuring their, their suppliers, <laughs> their suppliers <yes. laughs> to, uh, to explain uh, when they will support these kind of uh, new technologies, among them Ethernet. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, you know, I, I think, you know, that's great. It's great that the end users are pressuring the suppliers. Um, and, you know, we are a co-owner of the Ethernet APL specification as well, and we've got a strong vested interest in that. We, we manage, we run all, we handle the conformance testing for Ethernet APL physical layers and other, mm -hmm. other things as well. Um, but, you know, I, 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 all, I always look at the installed base, and frankly, you know, this is an installed base, biz, base business, right. and, and you, you've got thousands of devices out there that are 4 to 20 milliamp heart devices. So, uh, well, you know, and, yeah, <laughs> and every time that we've done a survey of that uh, you know, information, yeah. we know that the vast majority of the installed devices are, are really right. just... Heart. Which is why I want to get back to this notion that, you know, if you're an end user, you need to start thinking about upgrading your systems to support FDI and buying FDI device packages with your with your instruments because it is the on ramp to this digital transformation um, model for all protocols. Yeah. OK, so so what an end user should do is. They should ask the DCS supplier that they have inc the incumbent DCS supplier or suppliers, yes. the device manufacturers, mm -hmm. um, any of the uh, asset management or device management software that they're using, mm -hmm. applications like that. Look into those areas and yep. find out where they stand with respect to FDI right. and then start to put right. this into their regular purchasing. Exactly. They have to start planning for the host system upgrade to support FDI. Yeah. Oh, That's, they're not running the latest version all the time. Well, they're not running the latest <laughs> version all, all, all the time. Know I mean, you, know, <laughs> you know, it would be great if, 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 they could, if they could move to a SaaS model and you come in one morning and the next day and you got the latest version, but the that industry's not quite there yet. That doesn't <laughs> you know? happen. So... Yeah, well, hopefully the industry isn't going to charge the, the end user a lot of money to upgrade the version. Well, that's not, I, I don't get into that. Like I said, no, we, don't, we don't deal with end not users. Your, yeah, that's, not, <laughs> that's, your, not, my that's not your policy to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Paul, I appreciate it very much. It's, I, you know, I, is there anything else that you'd like to mention about? I think, you know, I, I, I think we've hit on the major points that, you know, maybe in some future podcast, I'll come back and I'll show you some UIPs or I'll show you some of the interesting Stuff that's that involved in video. FDI technology. We should that's do a, that on that's video. That's a great idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's well, a great, great idea. I appreciate you know, taking the time to talk with us, and uh, it's been a pleasure, as it always is, to see you, and we'll see you again like, soon. Likewise. Okay. Take care. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. This is Harry Forbes from ARC Advisory Group. My guest has been Paul Sirico from the Fieldcom Group. Thanks for watching and listening.